Have you heard the story about a farmer who had only one horse? And one day, the only one horse ran away. The neighbors came to console him over his terrible loss. And the farmer replied, What makes you think this is so terrible? A month later, the horse came, bringing two more horses with him. The neighbors became very excited and came over to the farmer and said, What good fortune to have such lovely horses! The farmer replied, What makes you think this is such good fortune? A few days later, the farmer's son was riding one of the horses and he was thrown off and broke his leg. All the neighbors were very distressed and said, Oh dear, what bad luck! And the farmer said, What makes you think it's bad? Soon after that, news of war came and every able bodied men were drafted to fight. But the farmer's son was not because he had a broken leg. The neighbors once again came and congratulated the farmers. And the farmer said, What makes you think this is good? Interruptions of life. This poor farmer had a few, didn't he, besides nosy neighbors. <laughs> There were interruptions that were bad, but the end turned out for the better. But unlike this farmer, it's hard to see, it's hard to hope, it's hard to have faith when interruptions hit you. Friends, this morning we're going to look at another interruption, one that took place in the life of Jairus. A synagogue ruler. For the most part, we can assume life was going well for this ruler. He was respected in his community, he was a leader responsible for the local synagogue. Then one day, his daughter, 12 years old, got sick. She was very sick. You know, it's one thing when you're sick and not feeling well, but when your child is sick, You feel like your whole world is falling apart. Nothing else matters but getting your child well. So Jairus hears about Jesus coming into town and he runs for him. And lucky for him, he's able to get Jesus' attention even with the large crowd pressing around him. And Jesus agrees to go with him. Jairus is probably feeling very hopeful. It's going to be all right now. I've got the miracle healer with me. It'll only be a little while longer before we get home, and then he'll heal my little girl, and she'll be all right. Right then, everything stops. Jesus stops. The crowd is getting larger by the minute, and instead of rushing forward, Jesus stops. He stops to ask, Who touched me? And here is where Jairus' faith begins to be tested. In this passage, we have two encounters of healing. We have both the basic lessons of faith and what I call the advanced lessons of faith. And last week, that's what we looked at. We focused on Jesus' encounter with the woman who had the issue of blood. And we saw how her encounter brought healing. And we call that the basic lessons of faith. Jesus called her out not only to affirm the woman, but also to teach the large crowd that was there what it means to have faith. Faith that was simple and yet connected to Jesus. The woman's faith was demonstrated in her reaching out and touching Jesus. She had heard about Jesus, she got information that he healed people, so she pushed herself beyond her fears, and out of desperation to be healed, she touched Jesus, and before the crowd, Jesus tells her that her faith has healed her. Through this woman, Jesus gives us the basic lessons of faith. Jesus sets his lesson up to teach not only her, but the whole crowd. It was a public teaching on how to have faith that connects you to Jesus. She had faith, she was healed, it was immediate. But with Jairus, we're going to learn the advanced lessons of faith. And we see that unlike the basic lessons of faith, which was for everybody, These advanced lessons of faith were only for a particular group. How do we know? Because in verse 37, Jesus did not allow anyone else to follow him except Peter, James, and John. 
and the little girl's parents. In fact, he gives them strict orders not to tell anyone. The advanced lessons of faith isn't for everybody. But we'll see that this lesson of faith not only connects us with Jesus, but also grows and matures our faith so that we become more like Jesus. The advanced lessons of faith is how to have mature faith that brings you into a deeper and more intimate relationship with Jesus. Friends, what if we only heard the story of Jairus in this reading? It would go something like this. A leader of the synagogue, Jairus, appeared before Jesus and begged Jesus to heal his daughter. Jesus sets out, a great, fo- a great crowd follows and presses around him, and then some men come to Jairus and say, don't bother Jesus anymore, he, your daughter is dead, it's too late. So Jesus overhears this conversation, tells Jairus, don't fear, only believe. Then he takes Peter, James, and John and his parents and enters the girl's room and tells the little girl to get up and she is healed. Great story, right? But the story is not told like that. If it were, we would have missed the advanced lesson of faith. Because the advanced lesson of faith has to do with interruptions. Here are the disciples, and they're very excited. Why? Because Jesus is on his way to save a little girl. And they're kind of in a, like an EMS truck, and I don't know what it's like to be in an EMS truck, but with the sirens going and all, I'm sure it's very exciting. But then suddenly Jesus stops the truck and starts talking to this woman, a woman, an outcast, a nobody. What's he doing? And everybody's going crazy. And nobody more so than Jairus is probably saying, why in the world is Jesus doing this? I have a little girl who's dying. I bet there's a lot of us who can identify with Jairus. Your life has been interrupted. Things seem to be moving along as you had planned, then suddenly life takes a turn. You did not plan. Someone you love became very sick. The money you thought you had is gone. The relationship you thought you'd be in forever is ending. You're experiencing depression like you've never had before. The job you relied on to put the roof over your head is being cut. Interruptions. Of course, there are positive interruptions like being proposed to or a news of a promotion or a news of a grandchild. But those don't test our faith as the others do. Why? What happens when we experience negative interruptions? 